Hi, Graham Roberts here. Well, um, there's been a request to see how one can get a J spinner to cough up its value and also to do this using state change. Uh, that's what we're going to do. So here we are, we have NetBeans with nothing in it, no projects. So I'm going to start a project and then I'm going to uh, put a spinner and get it to work hopefully let's start so we first of all go to file new project I'm going to have a Java application and I don't care what I call it so I'm just going to call it any old thing that they want here I'm going to um, not create a main class though because I have to have a, a extend from a JFrame so I'll just say that then I go in here and I say alright thank you very much I'll have a JFrame form and again I don't really care what I call this nor what package it's in actually so I'm just going to say finish very cavalier and there we have a form and we can use the auto layout that NetBeans so generously offers us with the swing objects well the swing object we want of course is a J spinner as it is called. Now a spinner uh, enables you to get input from the user using a, a spinner for numbers or dates even whatever you want really. So we put that on there. It defaults to a, a number and indeed um, that can lead to some problems or confusion because actually we need to address the model as it's called in order to be able to differentiate what we want to do with that but uh, anyway that's what it looks like at the moment we need something really on the form so we can see what the value is inside the spinner when we uh, want to capture it when there is a change of state in the spinner so let's have a, J, uh, a text field we could have uh, we could use a, J, um, a show message dialog but we don't need to so we won't bother with that complication so we put that down here have a J text field there um, you may notice that they're popping up down here in the navigator window um, or rather inspector what to say next right well let's have a look at the uh, we select the spinner and we have a look and see what its properties are now it's not very clear on here um, so I'm trying to get uh, it all into a small space but um, what we're looking for is in fact the model so we go down and find the model I should say up and find the model here it is spinner model I just click on the um, ellipsis there and you can see that the model type is default but we actually I want number it says what kind of number do you want well there are all kinds of different numbers we could have I'm going to go into what they are but they are all different kinds of uh, types of number according to a computer anyway um, integer was a default there um, so we accept that the initial value is zero let's say we wanted the initial value to be one why not and we wanted the uh, minimum value to be one that is it can never have a negative value and the maximum value can be I don't know um, let's say it can be seven I like seven seven days in a week I, I tend to work eight days of the week like we all do but there we are seven the step size is one seems reasonable I'll just say okay to that if I was to run this now we would have numbers from one to seven when it's spun uh, but we want to make sure it uh, changes in here and is shown here in the text field now to do that we go back to um, highlight or select the J spinner object and this time we're going to look at the tab if I could call it a tab the events and we can see that there are lots of events however there's one that we actually want it is state change down here and if I click on the ellipsis it gives us options now we want to add a handler here and it um, seems a bit odd maybe to you that we want to do that but it's um, you kind of think of it like a button anyway 
a new hand and a name, so I'm just going to say, I don't know, catch value uh, from spinner. It, it really doesn't matter what you call it. Um, and I click OK and it makes that handler inside the source there. And then, inside the source, I want to say what I want done with the value of the spinner. Well, I want the J text field, and uh, I'm kind of hoping that's the name of this, uh, sorry, field. I want that uh, text to be set to the value that is inside the spinner. I'm just going to call it uh, spinner for the moment. And let's get the spellings right. And it was the first one. I'm using default names. Now, spinner doesn't exist. Of course, it doesn't exist because I haven't made it yet. So I'm going to have a variable uh, called spinner. And I'm just going to create it here because it makes it easier to teach. So what am I going to have as a type for spinner? Well, since it's going to go into the text, it would be a good idea to have it as text. So I'll have it as a string object. So now it knows what it is. Uh, at the moment, of course, um, it literally is nothing. Uh, but that's what it would do. It put nothing into the spinner when the state is changed on, sorry, in the, in the text field of the spinner. Now if I just um, put in here something like uh, change value, I know we're not capturing the actual values, hold on, don't panic. And now I want to run this so we can, I'll just save that, run it and I'll just tell it where it wants to be and eventually we will get a program. Now this program at the moment there's just JTEX field 1 which was there at design time and if I click this you see it's got change value and obviously it keeps change value there's no way to get back what was originally in there uh, but what the next step is is we're going to put whatever the value is currently displayed on the spinner at runtime dynamically into the text field that's the next step so let's close that down okay well let's um, try and do that let's try and catch it uh, so we're going to have j spinner 1 hmm. j spinner it's a default name uh, dot what um, we're trying to get something from it so oh sorry let me just say spinner equals j spinner 1 this is what I was trying to show you that you can or should get the um, the offer up of the methods here we go now we don't want get name get these these first ones that are here but we do want to get so it'll be a get um, as if we come down here we get down here this get value notice it said it was a type object so we know that it's an object that's coming back, but what we want it to become is a string. So we're going to cast it to string here. Just to say, look, I know you're an object, but I want to define you as a string. Let's save that, let's run that, and see what happens. Okay, now, as I... Now this creates an error because of conversions. If we recall, the uh, model said it was a number, not a string. So let's take a different approach and say, OK, we do ultimately want a string in the text box, but let's initially get an integer. So what we can do, just to quit this, is write in something slightly different. So if we get rid of that line and pop this in instead, so integer my int is equal to a cast to integer of the object value that's returned. Then we say that the spinner, which is a string, is going to be that integer set to string. 
Then we run it. We get this, and we get what we wanted. Right, just let's recap on the main point. We have a J spinner, or a spinner object, on the form. We have a field to receive the message send of that object, which will be its retrieved value. And we do that by, first of all, creating this handler. But we created the handler by going to the events, and the state changed. Uh, property. Now another way of doing that by the way is to right click and go to events and change and um, then you can uh, get to the same place. Okay and then we put something in here which actually collects it. This is long winded but uh, will work as we've seen and so what that is doing is, let me just clear that out for you um, so we create a string which we can call spinner. We don't actually have to do this, this is just for the tutorial. So there we are, string of such spinner. And uh, we create an integer, accept the value from J spinner, and then we um, set it there. Now obviously a better style would be something like that. So much more so shorter isn't it? So there you have it, using the state changed. Now a lot of this tutorial was actually making it all ready to do that. The state change part was only a small part of the tutorial really. I hope that's helped.